an equal access to transit is a challenge among the many other challenges posed to poor and rural people in Africa. Almost half the population in Africa either walk or cycle to work or to school. Bicycles are used by millions of Africans to transport everything from children to chicken, but the vast majority of these bikes are unreliable and break after a short period of time. With an aim to find a solution to this problem, an American charity, World Bicycle Relief, has created a bike called the Buffalo. The bike's design is based on the British touring bike of the 1950s, but with the latest technology including a tough metal rack at the back for carrying up to 100 kg. There are now more than 70,000 of them in Africa, majority donated to charities and non-governmental organizations. We basically were approached by the same agencies like World Vision uh, who had HIV programs in Zambia and said we did a very good program in Sri Lanka so obviously we now want to roll out a similar program targeting the community health workers. The community health workers work under very difficult conditions. Sometimes they have to walk 10 kilometers per day. In Africa the project began in Zambia and it has now been introduced to Kenya where they target school girls who have to walk 3 to 10 kilometers every day, farmers and community health workers. The next year, 2015, we have uh, already started negotiations. We are working with the Ministry of Education to come up with the Bicycle for Education Empowerment Program. And this we are going to target 70% as school-going girls uh, to benefit from the bicycles. We still think we have malaria problems, we still have uh, HIV, mal uh, AIDS problems, and these particular problems require interventions at the community level. The bikes are assembled in Zambia, Zimbabwe and Kenya. This has created employment and provides a huge step in helping people reach markets, schools and hospitals. Though bicycles could play an important role in that elusive African renaissance, infrastructure is one of the biggest hurdles for cyclers. It is against this backdrop that wheels of Africa formed the critical mass. This is a cycling event typically held once in a month as a way of silently campaigning for cyclist space on the city's roads and drawing people to cycling. Critical mass, I'd like to call it, I'd like to call it a cycling campaign, a celebration of cycling and also sort of trying to share the roads and tell other motorists that cyclists do exist and you also need to share the roads just like they do. Since its inception, the number of cyclists has increased, and through this, they hope their message will effect the ultimate change, more cycling space. Bicycles are not only used for transportation, but they can also be used for fun rides and exercise. Tony Okulo, a lawyer by profession, picked up cycling with an aim of burning calories. It's, it's a healthy habit to acquire. It helps you uh, uh, get fit and lose weight. And secondly, we need people to start respecting cyclists. Unfortunately, the way most of our drivers drive on these roads, they have no respect for cyclists. As countries work towards developing smart cities, maybe cycling as a mode of transport would be an option for the city dwellers. Less traffic and no emissions. It's about time that maybe the, the people who are involved should be able to consider other means of transport, transport rather, instead of just looking at cars as a means of transport and bicycles. I mean, you can, you can be moving from Kangemi to town and um, within 10 minutes you're in town. So it's, it's actually faster, less traffic and um, it's a nice way to keep fit and also release stress and again, burn fat, not fuel. Having spent some time with the cyclist, I realized that commute by bike and at a stroke you remove the need for absurd cost of public transport. Cycling is almost completely free. There is no longer need for the gym as you get fit and you can go at your own pace. Marete Selvin, GBS News.